This video will explore what can be learned about a piece of coaxial cable which has unknown specifications using only a single port VNA or an antenna analyzer which is capable of only measuring impedance. This is Larry Benko W0QE and welcome to another video where I use SimSmith to help understand RF concepts. Let's begin with a blank SimSmith circuit and let's add a piece of transmission line to it. We can use the default parameters which is fine and set its length to be say 20 feet. Let's terminate it in a short and let's look at the plot. We don't need to sweep it anymore. Let's just look at the we'll look at the plot just at say 5 megahertz and if we were to put an antenna analyzer or a single port network analyzer here well, we'd re we could read the impedance that this transmission line shows with a short on the end and this length. And that would be 1.87 plus J73. We can add another piece of transmission line, and I'm going to do these simultaneously, although you could measure them by alternating the load from being a short to an open. Here, I do not need to clone the load part of it. I will set the load to be an open here. Say 1e e to the 9, a gig ohm is pretty much open. We'll take this piece of transmission line and replicate it. I did a control C, control V. And now we see two traces. We see one from the, from the transmission line T1, which has a short on the end, and another one down here from the transmission line T2, which is the same, same transmission line as T1 in, in terms of parameters. And it reads, 0.310 minus J34.8. Now, we can read that with every single antenna analyzer in the world will read impedance, or little network analyzers will read impedance. Some will also read reflection coefficient, which is which can be um, gotten from taking the impedance and doing a, a simple formula. But we can also get SimSmith to do the formula for us. So let's make SimSmith do the plot. So we can say plot. And let's give it the let's give it a name, say like return loss um, short, and that is equal to 20 times log to the base 10 of the magnitude of gamma. And what we're going to look for here is T1 dot gamma. So that is the complex reflection coefficient at that point. I'm going to put it on a scale called dB, and we'll make that x is y1. And I need to do that one more time for the other piece of transmission line, except we'll call it return loss open. And that'll be for transmission line T2, and we don't need to define the axes again. And we're done. Now let's go over here and look at the square chart when we do that. We see something that's interesting and something that maybe we should make the transmission lines a little bit longer. Let's make them say 50 feet. What we see here is something that maybe you've seen before, maybe you haven't, but return loss is, is, is the amount of... Uh, power coming back into the generator. We put a signal down here to measure it. A certain amount comes back. If the transmission line was lossless with an infinite SWR in the end, 100% of the signal will, of the uh, wave will be reflected back at some phase based on the length of this, and we can we will see it again as a um, as a reflection. And it's very interesting because we see ripples in this. You'd ex you would have expected this to drop off, and it does drop off. But as we increase in frequency, notice that the on, in this case right here, say, um, we're going to look at the blue trace here. The blue trace here shows the loss here being 0.5 dB. So that's a quarter of a dB down and a quarter of a dB back. It's a half a dB. 
Uh, it's actually a little bit more than half a dB. Uh, no, it's not. Just very close to half a dB. Now, but notice that the loss is actually less, say, at 11 megahertz. The loss is actually 0.47 dB. And what's happening is, along the piece of transmission line, there's places where the loss is larger and places where the loss is smaller. And we saw that in the previous video I did with the transmission line heating. And we're seeing the same, the same scenario here. But this is a normal thing to see. So if your single port analyzer shows something like this, you won't show both of these at the same time. It will show one or the other based on what you've got the uh, end terminated in. But you, you will see both of these curves. So my point here is nothing more than don't be surprised when you see a curve like that. You say, how can a... How can a transmission line have less loss at a higher frequency than it has at a lower frequency? And the answer is, it doesn't in the long run, but in the short term, um, what you start to see is you see more, you may see two or three um, high current places here in this piece of the tra transmission line, and a different one more or less low, um, low current uh, places in the transmission line. That'll determine whether the loss is higher or lower. So um, that's this is the only point I want to make here uh, with this. So let's um, look at an, look at another um, Sim Smith circuit. It's the same circuit as before. Everything's plotted the same way, um, except I have a D block I put in here, and I have I'm, I'm having Sim Smith do some calculations for us. The first calculation. I'm having Sim Smith do, and let's go back here and not sweep this anymore. Since we measured it, it do this in 10 megahertz, let's stop sweeping it for the moment. And there's our two impedances. 1.32, 72.6, and 0.219, 34.8. And that's for a length of 10 feet now in this, in this example. And that's a different piece of transmission line than we had before. Uh, no, it's the same piece of transmission line we had before. It's just a different link, length. It's a different frequency. We, if we take the impedance that we see here, which is a complex number, and we take the impedance we see here, and we do the following. We multiply the two complex numbers together and take the square root of that. That turns out to be the, ca the calculated impedance of the piece of transmission line, believe it or not. And let me make this a little bit larger so it's easier to see too. So you might be you might say to yourself, well can I take the square root of a complex number? And the answer is sure you can. Yeah, the easiest way to do it uh, to think of it is to convert the complex number to a magnitude and an angle and then take the square root of the magnitude and, and then have the angle. That, that will work. Sim Smith can do it for you. I'm having Sim Smith do the calculation. So in this case, we know this piece of transmission line is, a, is, is 50 ohms. And we know that the loss is half a dB per 100 feet. What I'm doing is getting Sim Smith to tell us what the calculated impedance is based on two impedance measurements I made with my single port analyzers. Now, could I have done this at a different frequency? Certainly I could have. And let's move the move this frequency down, and we see things changing here. But they're all they're all nearly the same number. It varies very slightly, but it's pretty much 50.3 ohms minus J.3 or, or so. And if I go up higher in frequency, it still stays about 50 plus J minus 0.2. So it's a very very easy way to measure the um, characteristic or surge impedance of a piece of transmission line measuring nothing more than trans uh, than than the impedance you see from the equal piece of transmission line i'm doing these two in parallel at, for this example you would do make a measurement with it shorted you'd measure it write the number down you'd open the end up and write the number down again and that represents these two numbers right here now the next thing we can do with these two numbers is we can calculate a 
return loss like we did before. And it's again, 20 log gamma. And I'm, I put some negative numbers on these because we usually think of return loss as a positive number, but it goes negative on the, on the, on the Smith chart, excuse me, on the square chart. So let's go to the square chart and sweep. And here's what we see. We see, the, we see the crisscross of the two return loss numbers again. What we're going to do is we're going to average those two numbers right here. We're going to divide it by four. Remember that the, the loss we want in the transmission line is one way only. So when we add the two together to get an average, we have to divide by two to begin with. And then we want half of that because that number is the number down and back. So the shorted return loss plus the open return loss divided by four. Now we're going to multiply it by 100 over length. And if we do that, then that will get us the loss per 100 feet, which is what we want here. And we calculate that at 10 megahertz, and we get 0.497. This piece of transmission line was spec to be 0.5 dB. So again, from having nothing more than the impedances, we can calculate the loss. Can we also calculate the velocity factor? And the answer to that is yes, we can calculate the velocity factor also. To calculate the velocity factor, we would need to center, well, we don't have to center the Smith chart on the uh, surge impedance or characteristic impedance of the transmission line. But if you do, you can read, you can read the percentage of a wavelength directly. Rem on, in video number 41, I did a video about transmission line length conundrum. And that was the fact that if I did not have 50 ohm transmission line, the rotation here did not occur equally throughout the circle. The other solution to this problem is to go bring your, bring your analyzer back up and just pick a frequency where you're, where you're at the halfway point, either halfway or full revolution, and then it doesn't matter what the impedance is of this transmission line. And you can use that to determine the velocity factor. You know the length of the cable. You know at this point in time that this is a quarter wavelength of transmission line length because the half wavelength um, re repeats on itself. So we can get the surge impedance. We can get the loss of the cable at a frequency and we can we can change the frequency and see the loss. Now if we change the frequency, watch what happens to the loss here. The loss will change and it will go up. So let's go back down here to say five megahertz. And we know that if we double the free, um, multiply the frequency by four, the loss will double. So 0.352 and I go to 20, it goes to 0.704, pretty close to doubling. I go to 80, should double again. That would be like 1.4 dB. And sure enough, it is. So we can calculate the loss in the, in the cable. We can calculate the impedance of the cable, and we can calculate the velocity factor, all by making measurements of nothing more than impedance, which I think is kind of cool. Um, that's something I didn't come up with this. Uh, this has been known for years and years. And it's one of those things that in, in school you, they have you do. There are some caveats to doing this. Um, one of them is you need to use enough cables so you get reasonably accurate numbers. Um, if the cable is extremely low loss cable, your impedances will be right at the absolute edge of the Smith chart. Let me set this up like this. Let's say I had really big cable and it had like a tenth of a dB loss per hundred feet. These numbers are so close to the edge, you might have a very difficult time measuring them accurately. So you might want to use a little more cable in that case, but um, you know, so be it. I've bought rolls of cable before that were uh, Teflon cable, 62 ohms. I bought some 73 ohm cable, um, some 93 or 92 ohm cable, some 100 ohm cable that way, all unmarked. Um, some of it has mil spec numbers on it um, that if you know the mil spec number, you can figure out what it is. But uh, this is a very easy way to do this. And uh, let me finish up here with one more graph. This is an actual measurement. What I did here, and I have just two, two, um, two loads here. 
The first load is a file that I measured a piece of transmission line. It was a 14.75 foot piece of transmission line. It's the one that I had at the beginning of the video showed, showing. It looks like um, looks like RG142, and I think it may be RG142 or or some variant of RG142. Um, but it's 14.75 feet long, and if I plot this. Um, I measured the impedances from 1 to 60 megahertz in half megahertz steps. And that's, that's what this graph is right here. I measured it for a short and for an open. So this, is, this one here is for a short. This one's for, for an open on the end. This impedance right here is an open. This impedance here is a short. And I did the calculations just like I did before here. I calculate... The loss of this piece of cable at 10 megahertz to be 1.366 dB per 100 feet. The specification for RG142, I believe, is like 1.27 dB per 100 feet. So it's pretty close to that. Now, this is old cable. Um, maybe that has a little bit of effect, effect on it. The, the braid could be slightly tarnished. But it was a roll I picked up for, for virtually nothing. And it shows also the impedance is 50.68 minus J1.18. Um, the negative piece of the reactance here uh, becomes a little bit larger as the cable get, becomes a little bit more lossy. I didn't, uh, I didn't calculate the uh, velocity factor here. But what I wanted to show was... I'm going to have to stop sweeping this. And... Uh, maybe I need to sweep it. Let's just look at one of them, though. This doesn't show it real well. Uh, maybe. Yeah, this shows it a little bit better, maybe. We start to see bumps and stuff in the, in the loss here that we wouldn't see normally. And where we see these bumps, those are places where my little analyzer doesn't do as good a job and measuring impedances. It doesn't measure impedances really very well right here and right here. And we see that in the center here. This is kind of interesting. This is a plot. And I'll move the frequency around here. Let's see if I can find a bad place. Okay, there's a bad place. And 11 and a half megahertz. At 11 and a half megahertz, we'll see see where we are on this on this uh, piece. We're right at the high impedance point. And over here, we'll be right at the low impedance point. And if I zoom back in, I go to the next. OK, 35 megahertz. At 35 megahertz, I'm again back there. So. What I've learned is my an analyzer is not quite as good at these spots as it is up here. If I if I pick another frequency, say like like there, I'm no longer near the the horizontal extremes on a Smith chart, and here I get a calculated impedance of. 49.6 minus J points 0.63. Again, it's very very close to 50 ohms. Um, yeah, this is what happens when you make measurements. They're not perfect. Again, I, I did make a video a long time ago about making accurate RF measurements. I think it was video number 18. Um, it talks about this kind of stuff. Your analyzer may be better than the little one I used. Uh, my big analyzer is much more accurate than my little one, but it, I can't get the files out of it nearly as easily to put into uh, SimSmith. So I use the little one a lot of times. But... Um, Anyways, this is kind of a, kind of a fun thing to do. It's uh, a very interesting way to make measurements on cable. You can certainly make them with a two-port analyzer. You can um, measure loss more easily that way. But this works quite well. And you can do it by hand. You can do it with a calculator. You can have SimSmith help you do the calculations if you wish. But I uh, thought, thought it might be just a kind of a corollary, corollary to the previous video I did on... Um, 
the, the hot and cold spots of co in a piece of coax when you're driving it with power. So anyways, hope everyone's enjoyed the video. Thank you very much.